Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is one class from the 2022 HVACR Symposium in Claremont, Florida. We have the symposium every year, and so to find out more information kind of upcoming, go to hvacrschool.com slash symposium. Big thanks to our sponsors for this event, which was AccuTools and TrueTech Tools. They're the two title sponsors that made the event possible. In this session, Jenry Garcia and Sam Meyer, Sam is with RetroTech, and Jenry is a Florida contractor, South Florida contractor, talk about RTFM, but wait, the home doesn't have a manual. So what do you do to diagnose the envelope of a home? What do you do to diagnose the issues inside a home in order to make sure you get great outcomes when every house is a little different? My name is Sam Myers. This is Jenry Garcia. Um, as you see the title here, RTFM, but wait, this house has no manual. You know, we came up with this concept of, you know, in the HVAC field, building science field, the way that we look at equipment, the way we look at tools, the best way to do things is to read the manual. Uh, houses don't really come with those. Um, there's, a, there's a saying that, uh, you know, with, especially with custom built homes, every house is a prototype. Um, so you really have just one, re, uh, one chance to get it right and figure it out. But um, houses have a lot of moving parts. They're not just standalone um, solid state objects. There's a lot going on there. Lots of different pressure changes, mechanical systems, uh, winds and stack effects that play a role on all these things that are happening all at one time. So, uh, so we came up with this concept, like what if houses had manuals? What, how, what would it look like? Um, what kind of things would they entail? What kind of things would be included? So um, even though this is not a thing and likely never will be, um, we at least put some concepts together to show uh, how we can at least have some practices to look at certain things uh, that we can use in pretty much every home to make sure that it's gonna be comfortable and working as it should, keeping the occupants happy. So my name's Sam Myers, I'm with RetroTech. We make uh, building science, HVAC diagnostic tools, things like blower doors, duct testers, airflow measurement tools, high precision manometers, uh, and things such as that. So I serve as our in-house trainer, building science consultant, wear some other hats as well. And Jenry, I think you're gonna be the best person to introduce yourself here. My name is Jenry Garcia. I'm um, not much of a scientist. Uh, not unlike many of you guys, I get in my work van in the morning and work to the calls and rush home to make it so before my kids go to sleep at night. Um, I have had a, an incredible blessing in the sense that I have been exposed to some of the greatest minds in the industry, I feel. And as a result of that and some uh, resilience slash luck, I have been exposed to some really, really tricky problems uh, when it comes to problematic homes that didn't really have an AC problem or an HVAC problem, so to speak, um, from the standpoint of the equipment or the charge or the airflow or anything like that. And that's what we're going to try to uh, represent here. That was very modest. Jenry's a rock star pretty much. Um, I remember when he first started using blower doors just a few years ago, and he's just hit the ground running ever since. And it's been really fun to watch some of the things that he uncovers uh, inside of houses. So this is, uh, Jenry and I wrote an article together that was uh, published at HVAC School just a few weeks ago, uh, where we kind of touch on this subject. And we're diving more, uh, a little bit into it today to show some real world scenarios and demonstrate um, how some of these concepts work. And, <laughs> So when a, the typical HVAC contractor is looking at things as far as mechanicals go, you know, checking static pressure, looking, uh, looking at superheat and subcooling, yeah, that's great, but you're not really going to get the full scale of comfort. Jenry, what, what would you add to this part here? Because you, you've done that. So as an HVAC person, we, we are, um, we're conditioned, right? So we have this thing where we, to look at pressures and temperatures and superheat, subcooling, all these things, airflow, static pressure, and then somehow we're going to fix everything like that. Uh, this presentation is more about what happens with all those boxes checked out and still, you know, things don't add up. People are not comfortable and uh, they have, you know, high humidity issues, just complaints about indoor quality, et cetera. House as a system, as a concept, is just like the presentation that Eric was uh, having before us. 
it's just nature seeking balance. Um, I have mentioned before in other platforms, we, we have grown accustomed to the fact that we are removing heat from inside a home with refrigerant at high pressure and high temperature before it hits the TXV. And we are rejecting heat outside through the, through the coal gas and the suction line that is running at 50, 55 degrees, and then just we're going to get rid of that heat when it, when it goes to the condenser coil in 90 degree weather. Like those things are counterintuitive, but somehow it, it, it just makes perfect sense for us. Like the refrigeration system, even though it's not, count, it's not, even though it's not self-intuitive, it just makes sense for us. And we appreciate it and we fix it every day, right? And uh, this stuff's easier, a lot easier. We just got to expose ourselves to it and just understand it. And hopefully we can, we can show that here. Yeah, so there's going to be some things here that really piggyback on some of the things that Eric was talking about if you were in here when he was presenting. Um, but in the article that Jenry and I wrote, I mean, if, if you come out of here with one thing, just understand that the, the building envelope is a part of the HVAC system. And if you're really not looking at how it's performing or how well it's matched up to the system that's installed or that you're planning to install, um, there's a lot that can go overlooked there. So there's three key points that we put in here. And uh, we want to determine the amount of leakage that's in the, in the building envelope. We want to know how leaky it is. Is it a crazy high number? Can it be controlled? Um, where, are, where, where do we stand with that? Um, and then two is we wanted to see how that leakage is distributed. Is it evenly throughout? Is the whole house kind of unified in how it leaks? Is it all in one room? Uh, is it all ceiling? Is it all floor? Um, that's important to know too if we're really going to try to uh, reel this thing in and uh, get it to perform like it should. And then we want to see, uh, the third thing that we want to see is how the mechanical system interacts with the envelope. Cool, so we've done the blower door at 50 pascals. We've seen how that performs. We've seen where some of these problems are. So whenever we kick the, uh, the HVAC system on, what happens to these rooms? Do they go up? Do they go down? Do they stay neutral? Are we pushing air out? Um, are we sucking hot, humid air in? What's going on? So uh, we'll show you uh, how we can uh, uncover some of these things. Um, I know Eric kind of said this verbatim. I stole this from Joe Madosh. To be fair, he left it where I could found it, uh, where I could find it. But uh, he might have used it today. I caught part of his presentation. But when you think about it, the building envelope is the container that holds the final product you deliver to your client. It's that simple. Like, if our job is to carry water in a bucket, don't we want to know if that bucket's going to have a hole in it first? So the building envelope, is a, it, it works similarly. Um, does the mechanical system match the house? Can we fix it with more airflow? Is, is that going to do anything? Is throwing a bigger, does throwing a bigger system in there make any sense? So we need to see if, uh, if this kind of thing can be fixed and um, see where those problems are. Um, so this is, uh, when we talk about the envelope, there's different terms. Building envelope, pressure boundary, air barrier, those are all the same thing. And what, basically what we're talking about is that outer skin of the building that defines inside from outside. And the materials constantly change as you go around. So these are some, uh, some sectional drawings that we did. I used to work for an engineering firm in Raleigh called Advanced Energy. And uh, we managed several different building performance programs. And so this is a checklist we put together to call out where different weak spots are that uh, commonly occur in the air barrier. So, you know, your common culprits of things to look for Basically, where one material meets another um, that's not deliberately sealed, that's where we see things fail. So things like corners, um, especially when we're talking about walls, whether if they're exterior. Well, it really gets louder when I put my mouth closer to it, doesn't it? Um, I guess that's how these things work. But uh, when we have the most common one that we see here for attics, especially if we have a ventilated attic, is where this drywall meets the top plate. That right there, we see that as a pretty high leaky spot um, that a lot of people don't think about. You have this crack between the drywall and the top plate that goes on both sides of an interior wall, and it adds up. So that's air that's connecting to, uh, to a hot ventilated attic during the summer. But um, as you can see, basically anywhere we have a penetration going through the wall, was it sealed well? Um, are there any chases in there that are uncapped? Uh, there's, there's a huge list of things uh, where we could find problems. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this. I mean. For that number one point for testing, you have to do that with a blower door. That's how you get your number. 
whether if it's ACH or CFM50, the uh, CFM per square foot of envelope area, however you want to look at it, at least just get some kind of number to see where it lies. And uh, if you've never seen this done or had any experience with it, the way this works is we usually depressurize the house. Um, there's some cases where we don't want to do that. So if we have any ashes in a fireplace or if there's any mold that's growing on the air barrier somewhere, we don't want to pull um, any mold spores in the house. But usually what we do is depressurize. So like we're pulling uh, bath fan dampers, kitchen exhaust dampers closer instead of blowing them open. But it's just exaggerating all of those leaks in the house. And the way this, this thing works is if we know fan pressure and we know the surface area of the hole, we can calculate flow. And that's exactly what this thing is doing. So that's how we get, uh, that's how we determine how leaky the whole building envelope is. And uh, if that duct system is located outside of the envelope, the duct system is part of the envelope. It's part of the air barrier. So, uh, so all that uh, leaky, uh, duct leakage is, is counted there. Um, there's a ton more on this. I've got videos on YouTube. Just search Retro Tech Energy and you can see uh, how a blower door test is run, but we're not gonna dive too far into that today. We can later though if you want, so feel free to, I'll be here till Saturday. So uh, the point number two that we had in our article was locating those envelope leaks. Where are they? Um, there's different ways to do that. One of my favorite ways to do it is to flip that blower door fan around and pressurize the house. You can shut doors, bedroom doors, whatever room you wanna focus on. And if you see smoke shooting up under that doorway, yeah, there's some leaks going on on the other side of that door in that room somewhere. Basically what that smoke is doing is making that air current visible that's being exaggerated by the blower door fan. And so it's just leading you to it. Um, this is quick and easy to do. Uh, this is great for encapsulated attics too. Um, encapsulated attics, if they actually did it right. Uh, you can pop the attic door open. If smoke is going up in there immediately, yeah, it's not sealed well. So that's another great test you can do there too. But that's just one example. Uh, Genry has a whole series of articles on zonal pressure diagnostics, how you can use a high resolution manometer. Same type of manometer that would come with a blower door system, how you can use that to, uh, to determine you know, how, a, how a room is leaking, how a crawl space is leaking, if it's encapsulated, an encapsulated attic, just different ways to look at that um, to see how that leakage is, is occurring. So uh, we talk a lot about qu equipment sizing too. I mean, the, the shoe has to fit. Um, I, I'm sure if you've seen me comment on anything on the HVAC School Facebook group or any of the videos that we put out, I mean, this is kind of step one. You need to do a load calc. The rule of thumb thing has to go uh, if we're really gonna get things right. Um, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. We, have, we love putting ductwork flex up in the attic. That's just what we do there. I don't know why but that's, that's just how it is. Uh, the systems are always oversized, so we're always turning fan speeds down. Uh, we still have overpressurized rooms when we turn it down. We still have high humidity, so we put in a whole house dehumidifier to help resolve those issues, but it's kind of a stupid problem to have at this point. Um, if we just actually measured it to see uh, and calculated what size system that we need, a lot of those problems would go away. But uh, this is from Wrightsaw, from a, uh, a house that I had in Raleigh. Uh, infiltration made up about a quarter of the heating load here. So, um, but we had to run a blower door test in order to see that. But yeah, like I said, the shoe has to fit. Um, the system has to match the house if we're really gonna dial this in and do it right. Big thanks to Allison Bells for making this image. It's great, I use it all the time. But yeah, just like you wouldn't put an oversized you know, system in a house, you wouldn't go hike the Appalachian Trail on a pair of boots that are too small for you. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It, it has to be right. But yeah, like I said, it really does. So then we have to go and, and do things like this to make that installed system uh, actually work out for that house. It needs a little help to get uh, that humidity out of there. Jeremy, why don't you talk about uh, the old balance check for the house here? All right. So when we do a blower door test, uh, which is incredibly helpful, um, but it doesn't tell us about mechanical driven infiltration. So we could have a house with um, X amount of leakage through a blower door test. But when the AC runs, and when we do a low calculation, and we, got, we do all these assessments and things based on that, but if we don't take a look at the mechanical driven infiltration, when the AC runs, it can drive enough air in or out of the building, in and out of the building, I should say, to offset whatever value we accounted for in infiltration. So uh, this happens through leaky ducts. It's pretty much what it is, um, the main reason. Also, when we have 
on balance rooms. Um, this is a test that is very, very easy to do. The hardest part about this test is just spending money on the manometer. That's it. And a piece of tubing that comes with the manometer. That's it. So essentially, what we do is we run the we would run the HVAC, and then we can go sneak that tubing under under a closed door and the unit on a space that is conditioned, and we see how that space is pressurized with relationship to the main body of the house or just the rest of, of the main area that you're trying to check, right? So uh, we don't normally we don't want that space to be um, above or below. It's within three pascals is what you want it to be. There are some extreme cases where you would want it to be as low as two based on the, you know, the pressure in the duct uh, that, that's bringing the air into the space. When you, we have an unbalanced room, we have an unbalanced house. So if we close two doors in a house and that causes, I don't know, a 50 CFM each of infiltration, that 100 CFM of infiltration to come in the house unaccounted for, driven infiltration, this is an intermittent problem that is extremely hard to diagnose unless you know where to look, right? Diagnosing it itself is not hard. Like I said, it's just pressure trying to balance itself, right? Nature doing its job. You just got to know where to look, right? So when you close a bedroom, a bedroom door, you want that pressure to be within three pascals of, with the relationship to the rest of the house. There is a caveat there. The pressure in the room could be balanced, but you might not have enough supply air coming into the room. So before, before we go any further here, you know, there's got to be a way of assess the flow, the supply flow into the space where you know it's adequate or at least adequate enough to keep the space cool. Because you can have a room that is under condition and that is perfectly balanced, and the room will still be uncomfortable, right? There are others, uh, others at least one more scenario where the room could look balanced and actually not be, that we're going to discuss a little bit ahead. But uh, this is basically the, the base of it. One CFM in, one, one CFM out, one CFM in, right? We just went through this in the previous presentation. You have to, you know, every, every room has, you got to have enough return air path for every CFM of supply air that makes it into the bedroom to make it back out to the HVAC. Otherwise, that's going to offset the balance of the house and then we're going to have problems. This is... Uh, an example of the house with all the doors uh, and windows closed. We have supply, predominantly supplier leakage, and the house is pulling down to minus two pascals. If we have air leaving the supplier side in the duct where it's outside the envelope, then you're losing air to the outside, essentially, to a vented attic, to a you know open or an open crawl, um, software garage, depends on what it is, right? To, to offset that balance, right. Um, this is an, an example of leaky ducts. The, those are not very rare to come by, as you, you all know. Um, sometimes they're hard to find. Spaces are tight, but they're out there. This is a predominantly leaky return air side. This means that we are bringing in more, out, more outside air, more air through the return that we're delivering through the supply, right? We're pulling air from the attic along with through the return vents right here, and then we are getting, it's getting delivered to the supply, right? So we are pulling more, we're pushing more air through the supply duct side, I should have said, than we are getting in through the return air vent. And that's because we're making up the balance through leakage on the, uh, the return side of the duct we're running through the air-conditioned space. Yeah, sorry. There's a guy named Robert Brarley uh, that uh, had an article in This Old House magazine where this exact thing happened, and I think there were four or five uh, members of the household there, I think four out of five had asthma, and then uh, they went in and fixed this problem and got some other things sealed up on the attic plane as well, and uh, I think half of the household got off of their asthma medication just from fixing the house that way. And um, you know, we've had similar things happen too in eastern North Carolina where um, in Greenville, North Carolina, their utilities, uh, municipal utilities actually has a couple of guys that goes out and uh, does this and actually does a good job with it. And uh, we have also with ducks and attics, we have a lot of ducks and vented crawl spaces too. And uh, this lady had asthma and uh, very leaky return duct and, uh, and a moldy crawl space, in a moldy crawl space. So you can imagine 
uh, the stuff that was getting pumped into that house. So once that was sealed up and fixed, you know, her asthma symptoms were cut in half. So big IAQ uh, penalty here whenever this kind of thing happens. And, um, you know, a leak that commonly gets missed whenever air sealing is occurring is that gap between the return box and the, and the drywall. That counts as a duct leak. I mean, that's, that's a sealing return if you stick your head halfway in there. Um, but, yeah, especially if you have several returns throughout the house, that adds up. Same for supplies um, for the return, uh, the supply uh, boots, too. So that's a, an area you want to seal with caulk or mastic. So, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a gem that Jenry found here. So this is a predominantly return air side leakage. So you see, this unit is in the attic, and the pressure in the house was 20 pascals positive with relationship to outside. This is an extreme case, which is, you know, fair. That is not very uh, common, but that is there for a reason. This is the opposite side of the spectrum. This is the supply of, you know, let's call it plenum for whatever it's worth. And uh, literally, the, the lid blew open. Pressure of the house, negative 60 pascals. For reference, a blower door will, you know, will pull the house normally to minus 50 pascals. That's how we do, and that's how we account, it, account for leakage. And this house, with that much, got as low as minus 60. That's a very extreme case. Those two previous slides were extreme cases. These are cases that are not that extreme. Also, because you see a negative number on the gauge, assuming that you put the, the tubing in the right place, because you see a negative number in the gauge, it doesn't mean that the, the, all of the leakage is on the supply side. It means that it's predominantly leaking on the supply side, right? You could have a return side leakage. It's just that you have more on the supply than you have on the return. That's what that means, right? Um, there are also some cases where you don't, you actually do this, and you don't see a uh, a pressure difference. Let the pressure the house looks quote unquote balanced. That duct might be tight, or you might have the same amount of leakage in the return that you have in the supply. That's what that means, right? The velocity of the of the uh, the velocity of the air moving through the duct also makes a difference. We have through the supply we're moving air at higher velocities, right? Six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred feet per minute. Through the return, we're moving air much, much slower. So a same size, let's call it hole, if the same size opening on the return is not going to equal to the same amount of leakage through a same size hole on the supply, right? So that's, those, that's another nuance to look at there. So if, if, you, don't, if you do this, I'll put it to you this way. So if you, do, if you know, if you go take a look in the attic or take a look at the return side or just whatever it's easier for you to find, and you see that the ducts, looks like it's leaking, like there's, a, there's an opening, a gap that the, the ducts is leaking through, either through the supply or through the return, and you do this test and the house pressure is zero, then that means you have enough leakage on the opposite side of that air handler to go along with what you saw, right? Does that make sense, everybody? So that's, that's essentially what we're trying to get at here, right? Um, this is, and I cannot stress how time consuming can it be, you know, trying to diagnose these things without this taking three minutes to do this. It's extremely, extremely helpful. Also, if you don't have enough return air path from a, close, uh, from a bedroom with a closed door back into the space, then that room, it's gonna be, uh, the, the house is gonna be unbalanced for, for how, by however much you're not getting back from that room, right? Um, there are cases where you have, th th there are rooms that are perfect, perfectly balanced. Let's say you have a room with you know, two Pascals, right? positive two pascals, you have enough supply airflow coming out of the vents and the room's still, the room's still uncomfortable, right? Assuming the premise of enough insulation, because that's not what we're talking about here, right? But assuming the premise of enough insulation, if you have enough supply, air, you know, air, supply, air supply, condition air is what I'm trying to say, then you have to, you have to look at the leakage of that room. So if you are pressurizing a room and the room is leaky, you're getting some of that air back through the return air path, and you're getting some of that. You're losing some of that air to the outside. The way to diagnose this is you close the door to that bedroom, and then you go look at the pressure of the house. If you if you close the bedroom door, and the and the room looks looks to be you know perfectly balanced or at least balanced enough, and the room is not comfortable with enough air supply, then the house is going to be negative, because that means you're losing air from that room to the outside. So therefore, the house. It's pulling up, it's pulling down, and trying to make up that difference. Make sense? Right. So it's it's not only about duct leakage. I mean, think about it. If if you have a passive, if you have a 
passive, if you have an overhead, an over the door return air vent, right, air path. So what's, what's your return duct there? The room, you know what I mean? So the, 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 the flow of the return back into the, back out of the room is the sole function of the pressurization factor of the supply flow, pressurizing that room. So that's how that works, right? So there are other cases where the, over, the if it's a, if that is with a passive return, if it's an active return, meaning a ductive return, then these things can happen. This is a room that is negative. It's actually opposite to anything that has been discussed. This room is actually negative with relationship to the uh, rest of the house. So infiltration is being you know, forced into this room through every crack and crevice. This is a, an infrared shot of that room and how that, that we had that corner there in the wall that show infiltration. So this, this was a house in Wilmington. We were, we were called over to see why the master bedroom suite was having high humidity. And as we shut the door, this is the number we got, almost negative five. Um, and it also had a connecting bathroom that had a bath fan that ran intermittently. So whenever that fan kicked on, it would go from negative five to negative seven. Uh, and what we realized was there's a pretty, pretty leaky corner here on this wall. Uh, this picture was taken when the blower door was running at about negative 25 pascals to really exaggerate that leak. And I mean, I didn't really need a fancy camera to get this. I mean, this was just a FLIR 1 uh, to take that. And I mean, these are, you know, as far as thermal cameras go, these are pretty inexpensive. But uh, they work well enough to be able to capture that. So what was happening was the, we asked the homeowners, do you sleep with the door closed at night? And like, yeah, we do. So with the door shut and with it pulling negative, it was pulling in air from that leak from that massive return. Somewhere down, down the line, uh, an HVAC contractor came in and put a huge return in the bedroom. So once we dampered that thing down and got it to balance out, they were fine. That's an exterior wall. Yep. So Nate's question is, how low can the pressure, does the pressure have to be for you to know that the room is not problematic? Assuming proper supply flow, normally within three pascals, what, what you are probably referring to, it's if you really have uh, really awesome ducts, if, if you redid all the ductwork and the pressure in the ductwork is low enough to deliver the same amount of, the, the same amount of flow, then you need the room, the pressure in the room to be even lower than the standard on three pascals. So I, I'll put it to you this way, as slow as you can get it. If, if you know, being zero, zero, it's not realistic, but that, that, that's what we're after here, right? So, or like, like, you know, like, like it's been mentioned, right? So if you have three pascals and the room is not, it, and you have enough, if you, if you have proper flow out of, the, out of the supply vent and the room's still not comfortable, then that means you need more return, right? There's also new ways to account for the return airflow. I mean, if, if you if you use a power flow hood, you can. It's very easy to measure the flow coming into the coming into the room and the flow coming out of the room, right? If those two numbers don't collide with one one with the other, then we have a problem. Another factor that gets lost here. So the blower door number matters. The can we go back to a pressure to a, to a one of the house? So let's let's just say that this is the picture that we're working with. We got to a house. We measured the pressure and the and the and the house with relationship to outside and the, the house is pulling down to minus 3.9, right? That number, and let's, let's just say that we have, I don't know, uh, 200 CFM of supply, predominantly supply air leakage, that that's what it took to get this house down to minus 3.9. That number, that readout for a given supply air value, it's gonna vary with the blower door number of the house. What does that mean? If the house is very leaky, this number is gonna go down. If the house is very, very tight, this number is going to go up. So while this is a, a good, almost uh, a cheat, cheat, a cheat approach, let's just say a cheat approach, to get to have an understanding of what's going on in the house, we need to, lead, we need to have at least a blower door number to have any idea of what's going on in here and why we're getting that pressure. That just goes back to that three-step thing that we put in that article. We want to know how leaky it is. We want to know how the leakage is distributed. And then we want to see how the HVAC system interacts with it. To go back to Nate's question about how low do you have to go, I mean, there's, there's not really a universal answer to that. It depends on the house. So what if you have a room and you have the door shut and you're only getting two or three Pascal's difference? What if that room is crazy leaky? You're still pumping air outside of that house, and so you're still going to have comfort problems, but you're not going to get there with just looking at that balance check with a manometer. That's when it really helps to go back and see what you can see with a blower door and a thermal camera, see what you can do with smoke, 
zonal pressure diagnostics on that room. That's what's going to help narrow that in. You want to start getting a few tests in there to use together to where you can really dial in of what's going on. So, so Joe's asking how we have the house set up when we do our blower door test. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the, all the doors open. We won't access to that entire building envelope. Um, if we're using a thermal camera and depressurizing. Right, yeah, Jen recovered that earlier. Yeah, just yeah, close the door and see what changes. And you know, you can, there's other ways to do it too. Going back and using the smoke, you can flip the fan around and pressurize the house, and then you can shut doors and see if that smoke shoots up under that, uh, that door undercut or not. I mean, that can, that can tell you too. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, depending on the day, sometimes you don't have good weather for thermal. Smoke usually works really well. Zonal usually works really well, but just kind of depends on which way you want to go. But just uh, going back to this leak here, um, we were actually able to go outside and measure this leak from the outside as well on that exterior corner. So that's where that foundation wall uh, starts to meet uh, the bottom plate there, or I'm sorry, over the crawl space. So we could kind of see uh, where that leak was just coming in uh, from the outside as well. So just able to measure it there from a couple of different points to zero in. Yeah, that wall is leaky enough. That room is under enough negative pressure to cause that to happen. If we zero it out, uh, it'll stop amplifying that leakage. Looks like it's demo time. All right. So, um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to simulate, well, we'll have to pass the hat around. What we have here, this is a duct simulator. Um, we're going to use the, we're going to say this is a bedroom. And we're going to simulate that this is our hallway door. And the way we do these, these pressure checks is that we can toss a tube under, and then we have our, our high-res manometer that's going to be reading pressure in that room. So we'll say that's the door shut. And so we're going to use this duct tester fan just to kind of simulate the HVAC system. What would happen in this bedroom if we have a house or if we have a room that's just too much, that's too positive? So to simulate that, we'll just run, and I've already done this before, so I already know what pressure I need to go to and what fan speed I need to go to. So we'll just hit, we'll say we'll run it at 20% and tell it to go. The flow on channel B doesn't really matter. I mean, this is a tiny little box. So yeah, we're not going to be giving it too much to get to pressure, but I'm using about 10 Pascals positive here because that's a number that I see a lot. Um, 10, 12, sometimes 15 that we see in certain rooms if you just shut the door with a tube under it. Um, so that room is too positive. Now, of course, if we open the door, that pressure is going to go down to zero. Door's open. It's, it's even. We shut it back again. We pressurize again. So that's when we need to have some kind of way to get that air back to the return. So in a lot of cases, we have a main return. Uh, we may not have one in their bedrooms. But when we have a door shut, there may not be enough undercut under there to allow that air to get back. So if we can put a dedicated return of a correct size um, or a jumper duct or a transfer grill or one of those cool Tamarack um, transfer grills through a door, if we find that sweet spot to get us in and open that up, we can watch that start to drop to where we can get it close to a more manageable number down to three or whatever. Um, to go back to what uh, Nate was talking about, like how do you know that, that right number? Um, let's say we flip things around. Uh, let's, say this is, let's say this is an attic or an exterior wall or some space that connects to the outside. I'm not changing the fan speed at all. It's maintaining the same speed. We're at nine and a half now. But what if I make the room leakier? We're adding some leakage. We got a big chase in, the, uh, in that wall somewhere. Now we're about even. And at first glance, that's going to look pretty good, right? We're under, that, we're under that three Pascal range. But we've got a really leaky room. So that alone isn't going to tell us um, the source of that comfort problem or if uh, balancing is an issue. If we were to go in and fix whatever that, uh, whatever that leak is and maintain the same the same flow, yeah, that pressure would crank back up. So that's, that's when it's worth taking a couple of different looks at it, not only just doing that, that balance check, but also looking at the room itself with a blower door to see what's actually happening there. How leaky is it? Where is it? Uh, how severe is it? And how is it interacting with the HVAC system? So on, on that same point uh, about Nate's question, so let's say, just bear with me here. So let's just say that you have 100 CFM, which is through a low calculation, it's enough to keep a room cool. 
right? And for whatever the reason, let's say you had a six-inch duct going in there. And for whatever the reason, you replaced it with an eight-inch or even a nine-inch. And you through, through adjusting dampers, you get to the same 100 CFM moving through the same duct. Is the pressure going to be the same in the duct, you guys? Pressure is going to be lower, right? So if the pressure in the duct that is bringing the air into the room is lower, then the pressure balance of the room needs to be lower, below the, the, below the 3 pascals threshold that I just gave you. Do, do you guys follow? So if the pressure of the path that is delivering the flow into a room drops, then so does the pressure in the room has to drop to allow the flow of this, of this air into the room. So that's, that's where that came from. Everybody understand how this worked? I mean, that's essentially what's going on in our houses. When we open and close doors, things change. Um, and not all rooms are equal. Some are leakier than others, and we don't really know until we test it and we look at it. Um, that's how we're going to narrow that down. So I guess the biggest takeaway is that you know, when you guys leave, just if you're not looking at the building envelope, you're missing about half of the equation. It's not always the HVAC system. The building envelope is a part of that HVAC system. It's containing all of that conditioned air you guys are working so hard to create. So we'll go to set speed again. We'll put it at that same pressure, but this time, um, you know, this is where the smoke can really help out. But for this aid, we can just show where it's going to come. Uh, to sit it right here. So we'll fill this up so we can actually see the air leaks. Yeah. We'll pass it around. So if we crank it up again, and if you ever do this, don't run smoke through your fan. Please don't do that. Yeah, do, do as I say, not as I do. So that's what's happening when we're pressurizing rooms. We're just sending that air outside of the envelope as hard as we can. So that's, yeah, Allison Bells had, a, had an article that said, well, the blower door number doesn't tell us everything. So when we shut doors, we can actually have the HVAC system exaggerate the leaks in certain parts of the house even harder, and this is what he's talking about. When we shut doors and we're not balanced off, that air's got to go somewhere. When you're pressurizing it, it's going to follow the path of least resistance, which is going to be the leaks in that room. And, uh, and this, is what, this is the result. This is what we get. Well, it, it's up to the clients. I mean, you can, you can show, you can propose options, but it's, at the end, it's up to the client. Um, at which point, I'll tell you what, if, if you can establish that the house is, which climate zone are you in? So, so it's hot, right? So it, it is, if, if it is in a southern climate, well, our, our big concern, I'm, a, I'm in Miami, so our concern is humidity, right? Um, when it's human like that and the house is out of control, they have to do something about the house. Otherwise, you're not going to HVAC your way out of that. The blower door, it, it is incredibly, incredibly helpful, right? Because even in climates like ours where we don't have a big delta, we don't have to worry about the heating loads, it at least it shows the client Right, that the house is not a it's a basket case, so they don't have they they, they can blame you for their shortcomings. You know what I mean? So his question is, you know, my old unit worked fine, right? Essentially, okay. So did your old unit had a PSE uh, motor, right? So now you have an ECM motor that's going to move more air. So if you remember how I was talking about the the leakage, it's going to be proportional to the speed of the air for a given hole, right? So if you have a hole of one inch and you have air moving at 500 feet per minute, the, leak is gonna be, the leakage is going to be less than if you have the same hole and now the air is moving at 900 feet per minute. So when you increase the flow, you're increasing the velocity, you're also forcing more air out of, out of the space. And that's why increasing the tonnage, when you have leaky ductwork, inc increasing the tonnage of the equipment, I mean, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're just creating more leakage. And maybe you put a dent on, a dent on it a little bit, but you, it's not going to be enough to keep it comfortable. I mean, if you need, all right, so I guess people are going to be mad. Um, I'll put it to you this way. If you need to use a five ton, there's something else wrong. Right, right, right. The amount of ductwork to move, you know, five tons worth of airflow through a space, especially for their return air side, the actual requirements to move such a volume of air efficiently and adequately are seldom possible and seldom they're not, I mean, they're not really necessary. So, yeah, if, if, if the client's trying to, you know, suggest that you throw a, a larger system at it, I mean, that's just where the blower door test helps. It helps you to, 
make that division of, okay, is this an HVAC system problem or is this a house problem? Is throwing more, is throwing more at it actually going to help or is it just going to be a waste of money? So it's just a good way to just kind of divide and conquer there. So an alarm going off. It must be noon. Jenry and I will be here through Saturday. Um, we're happy to take questions. I'm with RetroTech. We have a booth out there. I um, also have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel. My dog and I put one on every Tuesday. We have a series called Technical Tuesdays where we just kind of spend five minutes covering different topics, and uh, he's the reason half the people show up and watch. But, um, but that's, uh, that's going to wrap us up here, and we appreciate you guys joining us. Thanks for watching this video. Again, to find out everything we have going on, you can download the free HVAC School app on Android or on iPhone or go to HVACRschool.com. And then specifically up in the top, you'll see events to find out more about upcoming symposiums. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.